Tomorrow at 7.45 p.m. we have our first massive opportunity of securing some domestic silverware for this season. Tomorrow we have a huge test against our former manager in Antonio Conte who happens to be a manager where he is still revered by some fans whilst on the other side some fans feel a bit indifferent towards him due to the manner in which he left the club. For me though, bare minimum, he does deserve respect for his achievements at the club. However, I'm expecting a pretty indifferent reaction towards him from the home fans in tomorrow's game. I think now is a good opportunity to look at Spurs and look at the job that Antonio Conte has done there so far. And of course, ever since he's taken over, Spurs are currently unbeaten. Since signing for Spurs, of course, this custom a bring back system has been introduced in the team and Spurs have definitely benefited from this. We've seen Dyer return back to a back three, which is probably his best position right now. We've seen Winks turn into the midfield player in which Antonio Conte would like to have someone that controls and dictates the tempo of the game. And now the attacking players are scoring again. Goals from Harry Kane, Son and Lucas Moura with both Son and Moura now being the players looking to find spaces between the lines, attack the spaces and help provide some support to Harry Kane. One big weakness that Spurs do possess though is that the wingbacks in their wingback system might not be of the required standard that Antonio Conte would hope to have. Of course in Emerson and Reguillon, both of the issues that they both possess is that their crossing of the ball and their use of the ball in the final thirds has so far not been up to par. Emerson struggles with his deliveries and Reguillon prefers to make those runs in behind and prefers to play cutback crosses instead, instead of those crosses on the run. On top of this too, the final pass is still slightly evading Spurs at this point in time. It took a very late equaliser against Watford from a Sanchez header for them to get the result they needed and they did struggle to break down a very resilient 10-man Southampton team. Going back to us and one thing we must do is punish Spurs wingbacks. And I think one player that can definitely help us ironically out of everything that's happened recently is none other than Romelu Lukaku who I'm expecting for sure will be starting the game tomorrow. You'd imagine that Lukaku is going to be especially hungry right now to reinstate himself back with the fans. And normally when Lukaku is in one of those hungry states of moods, he comes back and he performs. And performing is something that he's going to have to do if he hopes to bring back some of the faith of the fans right now. And the best way to get some love back is if he starts banging in the goals. Tomorrow we must dominate them in midfield, we must pin back the wingbacks and for me, playing the first leg of the semi-final encounter at home, we must get the win. And I'm sorry if Antonio Conte is coming back to Stamford Bridge, he can't be leaving here with the result at all. So we have everything to do tomorrow to get the result. In today's match preview, I'm going to break down Tuchel's press conference. We're going to hear his thoughts on the aftermath of this Lukaku saga. I'm going to give my predicted lineup. And at the end, of course, I'll give my match prediction as well. So I hope you guys definitely enjoy. Smash the like button. Check out the latest videos that have been released as well. And without wasting any more time, absolutely no surprise that Lukaku was going to be dominating the press conference today. To be honest, I can't wait for this entire thing to just be left in the mud to be dusted and to be over. I'm getting a bit bored with it myself. And to start with things, we get the final verdict from Thomas Tuchel. He says the situation is not as big as people want it to be. It's not small though, but it is small enough to accept an apology and to move on. Thank you, Thomas Tuchel. Not gonna lie, I saw a lot of YouTubers especially getting up in arms, getting really angry about this. And in my head, I was thinking, well, when a month passes by and he starts scoring a few goals, I would think all those shouts of anger will be left in vain, are gonna look pretty hollow in the end afterwards. Next, he was asked how supporters are gonna react to the situation, with Tuchel saying that Lukaku wants to clean up his mess. Uh, we are happy, he is our player, we will protect him. If someone disagrees, the team comes first. Um, Tuchel has been very receptive and understanding and assertive in this entire situation and for me he's really handled this with absolute ease. Moving on to Lukaku again, Tuchel said that he was of course surprised by the entire interview, however Lukaku is very committed. Uh, he never sends any issues but understands that Lukaku is an emotional guy who will speak out and won't hold back his opinion. Um, he said we should not blame him and only focus on the negatives. Some noise came, but there is zero doubt about Lukaku's commitment to the cause. Of course, he doesn't know Lukaku's long-term career plans. However, he knows that Lukaku does have a long-term contract and of course, that's all he can focus on at this point in time. Now, Tuchel was asked how to get the best out of Romelu Lukaku and Tuchel reiterated that more time is needed, 
with his communication with the team, his understanding of the tactics as well, and of course how COVID played a part as well to slow down his understanding. We also can't forget that it's not like Lukaku was signed way before preseason started to work with the team and squad for a few weeks prior, so it's understandable that his knowledge as well as maybe Tuchel's use of him, you know, it's going to need some time from both parties to find the best solution. Next, and a nice surprise, Antonio Rudiger then came up with Tuchel saying that he can't predict the future when it comes to Rudiger. However, they are in constant communication with him. Um, Rudiger understands and knows how valued he is at this club too. And he is playing at an outstanding level. For me, I'm still hopeful that Rudiger can still commit his future here. Let's hope the club can find the best solution for him. I've given my reasons behind why this is happening to begin with. And I'm guessing that him, Chris and Sinaspi, they want to assess all the offers they receive first before going back to the club to really have those final, final talks. And we end with the final two questions when it comes to injury news. Don't expect to see Andreas Christensen. I don't see Trevor Chalaber playing. We got hints that Timo Werner may feature as well because he has been part in training alongside Loftus-Cheek. Maybe both these guys will be on the bench in tomorrow's game. And of course, maybe we should expect to see Thiago Silva playing tomorrow. And then with the final question, you guys, the last one on Lukaku, when asked whether he may apologize to the fans, Tuchel said that was it his intention to leave or create trouble or put pressure on Tuchel himself. Of course not. The air has been cleared and hopefully the air has been cleared throughout this entire conversation and we never have to talk about it again. Right now, you guys, let's now move on to the predicted lineup. Now, I'm expecting a fairly strong lineup uh, for the game tomorrow night, considering we have an FA Cup game against Chesterfield in which we can heavily rotate and hopefully use a ton of Cobb and Grads because we're going to have the rest players because next week we have an incredibly huge game against Man City. Now that Mendy, of course, has joined Senegal for the AFCON tournament, expect to see Capra and goal. And of course, doubts surrounding players like Loftus Cheek and Werner's actual involvement in the starting 11. But anyway, you guys, let me discuss the predicted lineup that I'm thinking should be playing in tomorrow's game. In this lineup, I have gone for Lukaku up front. Alongside him, I've gone for Mason Mount and Takam Ziyech. Wing backs, I've gone for Hudson Adoy. Marcus Alonso in the midfield, Jorginho Kovacic in defense, Silva, Rudiger, Aspilicueta, and Kepa in goal. Like I'm saying, it's an amazing opportunity to secure our first domestic piece of silverware against Tottenham as well. This is a big game. Personally, after that incredible comeback and fight and desire against Liverpool, considering the team are still on half empty, uh, big games is when this team wakes up. And for me, we're not going to win the league, but if we can collect as many trophies as possible, this can still be an absolutely incredible season. So tomorrow, we have to still see a strong lineup to make it easy for us when we play against Spurs away in the second leg. Of course, Lukaku has to play. He's our fittest striker right now, and this guy is going to be hungry tomorrow. Don't be surprised if he becomes our match winner, and I'm looking forward to seeing the reactions in the end once that happens. Wing back, so, you know, I'm still a bit nervous. Hudson Adoy playing as one. I'm only using him here right now because can I use Aspie there? Probably not, because I don't think Saar can start in the game tomorrow. I just think that. When he does play, he can get targeted and he is a bit of a liability sometimes in defence. Even though he puts in his very best effort as possible, it's just that the quality ain't the same as the other guys we have in the team. So I guess maybe you see Hudson Odoi playing one half there, maybe Pulisic moving there in the second half too. Marcus Alonso to start in the game as well tomorrow. And in midfield, I've gone for Jorginho who was rested in the last game against Liverpool. And Kovacic as well, who put in a masterclass of a performance, one of the best midfield performances in the league so far this season against Liverpool recently, which gives Kante an opportunity to rest a bit and come on later as a second half sub. I definitely think that the bench will give us a lot of opportunities to really just uh, change the game in our favour. If we, if we potentially have to use them, I'm looking at guys like Pulisic, who's been really good and so put in a great team effort recently. Kai Havertz as well, who's still a bit rusty, of course, after picking up COVID as well too. And maybe we might see appearances from Loftus-Cheek or Timo Werner as well. So, you guys, that's my predicted lineup. Ziyech, have to see him play tomorrow. I guess there must be a reason why he has been on the bench too. And if you guys don't agree, of course, leave your opinions in the comments below. So that now means we end things with the final match prediction. And tomorrow, I am going for a 2-1 win. Now, a part of me feels like we can get the clean sheet against Spurs. I'm expecting them to be defending very deep. I'm expecting us to dominate midfield, pinning back the wing backs as well too. And with Lukaku up front, 
a hungry one. I, f I maybe I see him getting a goal in the game tomorrow. If I'm being absolutely real with you guys, um, Tottenham tends to fumble the bag a bit when it comes to very high pressure games, and even though they have some injury concerns themselves as well too, I still feel like they're still not that finished article under Antonio Conte, so they definitely can be taken advantage of in the game tomorrow evening. We have to win if Conte is coming back as well. And the perfect guy to do that, to be that match winner for me, is Romelu Lukaku. So you guys, on that note, I want to wrap things up, keep things moving. I'm Nini FC, this is Blue Lions TV. I'll catch you guys later with some more videos. Cool.